Now, uh, if A is a subset of B and B is a subset of D, then A is a subset of D. A is a subset of B and B is a subset of D, then A is a subset of D. Thing is, is it because if you take any element of A, since A is a subset of B, it is an element of B, and since B is a subset of D, it is an element of D also. That is, every element of A is, a, is an element of D, which means A is a subset of B and B is a subset of D implies that uh, A is a can also be right there. A subset of B and B is a subset of D implies that A is a subset of D. Sometimes we say that this relation is transitive. Another interesting thing is that A is equal to B if and only if A is a subset of B and B is a subset of A. Suppose A is equal to B. If A is equal to B, A is always a subset of A. Why A is a subset of A? Every element of A is in A. You cannot find an element of A which is not in A. So A is a subset of A. Since A is equal to B, this means that A is a subset of B also. And similarly, you can also argue that B is a subset of A because B is equal to A. So if A is equal to B, A is a subset of B and B is a subset of A. Conversely, suppose A is a subset of B and B is a subset of A, then A is equal to B. Because A is a subset of B, therefore every element of A is in B. And since B is a subset of A, every element of B is in A also. Which means an element is, uh, an object is in A if and only if it is in B. Or A is equal to B. So this is another way of saying the statement that uh, two sets are equal if and only if the, they contain the same elements. And usually this practically this is the usually the easiest method of proving that two sets are equal. Whenever suppose you want to prove that two sets are equal, normally we use this technique. We prove that the left hand the first set is a subset of the second set and the second set is a subset of the first set. And combining you will get that they are equal. Another interesting thing is that an empty subset is a an empty set is a subset of every set. That is, if A is any set and E an empty set. Then E is a subset of A. What is an empty set? Empty set is a set which contains no elements. Some people will ask, why should you take such a set if it doesn't contain no elements? In mathematics, uh, sometimes we introduce some fictitious things like that for the completeness. For example, I was uh, telling about the uh, languages. Language is a uh, set of strings of a finite set of symbols sigma. So it is a subset of sigma star, the set of all strings on sigma. So it is a subset. can also be the empty subset. A language can Language is a subset of sigma star means it can also be empty. Let's say language with no, no strings in it. That is also a language. 
because that is a subset of sigma star and sometimes a string can also be an empty string with no symbols in it sigma star is the set of all finite sequences of symbols in a set sigma so a finite sequence can contain one symbol two symbol three symbol or an infinite number of symbols can also happen that the, the finite sequence can contain no symbols that is called the empty empty string and sometimes uh, people use this symbol lambda to denote that no, no, this kind of things are not very useful <laughs> but uh, they are they are for the complete completeness sake for why should we need uh, why why we need zero <laughs> when it started you had numbers like 1 2 3 4 etc only <laughs> zero is not zero is actually not necessary what is the use of zero in counting <laughs> if there is nothing there how can I, why why should why should we count that so can you can by the same <laughs> argument you can also argue that uh, zero is not necessary but in mathematics we allow our policy is that we allow uh, such things for the completeness sake they may not be very useful but uh, for uh, completeness sake uh, uh, it is better to introduce such things and th that will be helpful there is the attitude we take generally in mathematics <coughs> so you suppose that e is an empty set a set with no elements the point is that e is always a subset of a how can you say that empty set is a subset of every set you are claiming that every element of the empty set is in a but a, e contains no elements then how can you say that what is the state what is our claim our claim is that if x is an element of e then x is an element of e. if x is an element of e then x is an element of a this is our claim is it true this is an implication look at the truth table what happens x is an element of e can never be true why because e is an empty set that cannot so this is false and once this statement is false the implication is always true look at the truth table so that means e is a subset of every set so empty set is a subset of every set and we also have that every set a is a subset of a i mentioned that earlier a is always a subset of a and empty set is also a subset of a for any set a. this is having another consequence how many empty sets are there suppose that uh, e1 and e2 are empty sets e1 is an empty set e2 is an empty set that means they even does not contain any element e2 also does not contain any element. then since e1 is an empty set e1 is a subset of e2 since e1 is an empty set e1 is a subset of e2 and since e2 is a is an empty set you can get that e2 is a subset of e1 combining them what you'll get a is equal to b if and only if a is a subset of b and b is a subset of a so you'll get that e1 is equal to and what we proved there is only one empty set the or in other words empty set is unique there is only one empty set and usually we denote that set by the symbol phi greek letter phi okay. 
you take the set of all integers x such that 0 into x is equal to 1. You take the set of all integers x such that 0 into x is equal to 1. Does there exist any integer like that? No. So what is this set? This empty set. And you take the set of all real numbers R such that there exist no y in R such that x is less than y is less than x plus 1. Set of all real numbers x such that between x and x plus 1 there is no other real number. Does there exist any real number like that? No. This set is empty. What we proved is that this set are on the same. Some people may find it a bit strange. I pal chaya gurna, vella chaya gurna. Andrew Bidel, you put the Velachai on the other. I'll give me a little again. Oh, you put a little bit of a video in the Tamil Marilanda. You think it was like a living young and a little bit of 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 a little bit अब <laughs> 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 Palchain, Palka, no, it doesn't know. It doesn't know. I don't know. I put it away. Copy the copy put it away. And I've been in the way. Very well. 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 So there is only one empty set and that empty set is uh, usually denoted by phi. I, I, I want to stress the statement that this statement, P implies Q, is true if and only if whenever P is true, then Q is true. But uh, if P is false, we take that this statement is always true. This is the attitude we have, of course. Uh, computer science people <laughs> will also join us because computer science is just uh, an extension of mathematics or application of mathematics. So, or actually, it's just mathematics. But for other people, they may have some problem with this. This is a story of an American professor of mathematics who had this problem. He's having, he, his wife was not a mathematician. And uh, they were one day, they were going for a picnic. And uh, <coughs> when the preparations are being done, the uh, professor's wife asked the professor to take all the soda bottles in the fridge to the, uh, this um, <coughs> uh, 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 to the car 
for going the picnic. Usually the things are put in a <coughs> castle. Basket like that. And when they were when they were starting the journey, the uh, mathematics professor's wife checked with him. Have you taken all the soda bottles from the fridge to the basket? Which, because professors, especially mathematics professors, are in the habit of forgetting things. <laughs> so the wife confirmed whether he had done it. Now, when they reached at the reached the spot of the picnic, and then the uh, professor's wife uh, looked for the soda bottles, none could be found in the basket, <laughs> and the professor's wife became angry. Any wife will become angry under such circumstances. American wives will be more angry. <laughs> Professor's wife, wife uh, scolded the professor. I ask you to take all the soda bottles from uh, uh, in the fridge to the uh, basket. Yes, professor agreed. And I, when the when we started, I <laughs> confirmed this. I asked you whether you had done it or not. Then you, what you said? Yes, I said. Yes. And no soda bottle is seen in the basket. Professor said, yes. <laughs> then what are you saying? There was no soda bottles in the fridge. Because the wife asked the professor to take all the soda bottles in the fridge to the basket. And there was actually no soda bottles in the fridge. So, professor uh, can do it uh, with uh, the. Uh, so, professor, what professor claimed that every bo soda bottle in the fridge is <laughs> taken to the basket is true. <laughs> because if there is a bo soda bottle in the fridge, <laughs> that is in the basket. <laughs> with this information. <laughs> but of course, it will be very difficult to <laughs> convince the. <laughs> Professor's wife, <laughs> unless she's, unless the wife is, uh, such people are, uh, are also having this uh, idea. <laughs> so, uh, so, so this is the way uh, we look at things and uh, the other people look at things. And I think we should be careful about it. And then there is this concept of a power set. If A is a set, the power set of A is the set of all subsets of A. It is usually denoted by this symbol. Script P of A. That is, it is the set of all B such that B is a subset of A. So, power set of A set is the set of all subsets. Why is that? Why is it called power set? The reason is the following. If A contains n elements, we can see that power set of A contains 2 to the power of n elements. A power of n. That is why it is called power set. Some people are uh, denoting this by the symbol 2 to the power of A also. I, I will explain the reason for that later. And once power set is a set, you can take the power set of that also. 
power set of the power set of A. Or even power set of the power set of the power set of A. Such this can be. <coughs> now there are these uh, operations of. Uh, and before that, if A is a subset of B, then B is a superset of and that is uh, usually done by this symbol. If uh, 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 A is always a subset of A, the other subsets are usually called the proper subsets. That is, a proper subset, a proper subset of A is a subset of A other than A. Then we have this concept of union and intersection. Suppose A and B are sets. Then the union, the union of A and B is the set of all elements which are in A or in more formally this uh, union is of A and B is written like this and it is a set of all x such that x is an element of A or x is when we write that, we, what we mean is that, when, whenever we write like this, we mean that x is an element of A or x is an element of B or both. Even though we were writing only that x is an element of A or x is an element of B, it is implied that the other case is also. There is a, x is either element of A or element of B or both. This may not be the case we use or always. Sometimes when we say P or Q, we mean that either P is true or Q is true. P is uh, true P or Q means that uh, sometimes it can ha happen that we mean that P is true or Q is true and not both. Exclusive or and this is inclusive and in logical layers we are having separate <coughs> gates for that. Okay. XOR gate and OR gate. OR gate is inclusive or exclusive or is denoted by XOR. In mathematics, we use uh, or in the sense, uh, in the inclusive sense always. <coughs> so, whenever we write P or Q, we mean that P or Q or both. So, or both is implied. Whenever we write P or Q, we imply that it is P or Q or both. So this is important that uh, whenever we write or we mean that it is uh, in the uh, inclusive sense that is P or uh, Q or both. So, if a set is both, an element of both A and B still, it is there. For example, suppose A is equal to the set 
1, 2, 3, and suppose B is the set 2, 3, 4, A union B is the set 1, 2, 3, 4. So it contains elements of A, elements of B, and elements which are both in A and B. There is another operation called intersection. Uh, intersection of A and B is denoted by the symbol A intersection B and that is the set of all X such that X is an element of A and X element of B. That is it is the elements, the set of all elements which are both in X and Y, common elements of A and B. That is denoted by this symbol, intersection B. In fact, these symbols, union, intersection, uh, element of, subset of, uh, there is one more uh, relation called subtraction. There is a if A minus B is the set of all elements of A which are not in A minus B, if A and B are two sets, A minus B means the set of all elements of A which are not in B. This is called the difference. Difference of A. And some people are using this symbol, not the subtraction of sets. These symbols, union, intersection, element of, subset of, all these symbols were introduced by uh, Giuseppe Piano. Eighteen fifty-eight to nineteen thirty-two. I, I think I had mentioned the name of Piano in the first lecture as the man who introduced the axiom system for post-integers, Piano's axioms. This um, union and intersection operations are having several properties. One property is that A union B is the same as B union A. It can be proved very easily because X is an element of A and X is an element of B is logically equal to saying that X is an element of B and X is an element of A. Both are logically equal. So there is no. And, uh, a intersection B is equal to B intersection A because X is an element of A and X is an element of B is logically equivalent to X is an element of B and X is an element of A. Logically equivalent means both of them are having the same truth value. So these two operations are commutative. A operated with B is the same as B operated with A. Such operations are said to be Commutative. So these two operations are commutative, whereas uh, subtraction is not. A minus B is uh, may not be equal to B minus A. Because in this case, what is A minus B? A minus B is singleton one, whereas B minus A is uh, the set containing only. So A minus B and B minus A may not be equal always. So this symmetry is not here. And there is another operation 
related to this that is called symmetry difference. That is if A and B are two sets, the symmetry difference of A and B, that is A, the, usually we use this notation, A delta B for symmetry difference. This is actually A minus B union B minus A. A minus B is the set of all elements of A which are not in B. B minus A is the set of all elements which are in B but not in A. So actually, similar difference of A and B is the set of all elements which are in either A or B, not both. So if uh, in the union we have this uh, in inclusive sense, whereas here we have it in the exclusive sense. Sometimes um, people use this symbol also for symmetry difference and some people use this symbol plus for symmetry difference. This uh, difference of A and B is also called relative complement. That is the relative complement of of uh, B with respect to A. So A minus B is sometimes called as the relative complement of B with respect to A. In order to represent these things, it is convenient to uh, represent these things in uh, uh, things using diagrams. This was actually introduced by the 19th century British philosopher uh, John Wen, 1834 to 1923. He used some diagrams to represent the relations between the sets. And sometimes we'll be having the concept of a universal set or master set also. Universal set or master set. What is a universal set or master set? Actually, uh, this can differ from one discussion to another discussion. For example, suppose you are discussing the properties of positive integers in number theory. There, all the sets we discuss will be subsets of the set of positive integers. Or suppose you are discussing subsets of uh, real analysis, then most of the time we'll be concerned with the subsets of the set of real numbers. So, in, a, in some particular discussions, it can happen that all sets considered in that discussion are subsets of a given set. And that set is called the universal set or master set. But uh, such a master set need not be available always. For example, in, in set theory, there is no master set. Because in the set theory, we are discussing all sorts of sets. And uh, all these sets cannot be considered as a subset of a fixed set. There is nothing like that. So in, in a set theory class, there is no master set or universal set. But when you apply set theory to a particular discipline, it can happen that uh, there is a uh, set and all the sets discussed in the discussion will be subsets of that set. <coughs> and uh, uh, such set is called a universal set or master set. And once there is such a set, then we can define the complement of a set. That is, uh, uh, suppose uh, the universal set is denoted by, or the master set is denoted by 
say u. Now, if a is any set, uh, then we can write a complement as uh, a complement is sometimes denoted by this symbol uh, as the set of all elements of u such that x is not in a or u minus a. Sometimes in, instead of this, uh, some people use uh, this notation, some people use this notation also for the complement of a set. This is absolute complement. The other thing is relative complement because uh, this is the complement of B with respect to A. But uh, if there is a universal set or master set understood, we can ignore that and just we can say uh, it has the complement of the particular set. So we have the concept of union, intersection, difference, symmetry difference, and the complement. Let's depict all these things in a diagram. Usually the master set is depicted by a rectangle like this. And the sets, individual sets are usually uh, represented by symbol closed curves. So for example, circle. No, not be circle, you can also use ellipse or any other uh, simple cross curve. So, suppose you are having one set A and another set B. This is A and this is B. Then A union B is the set of all elements which are either in A or in B or. So, this shaded area is the, this is the A union B. Whereas, So this is A and this B, this area, this shaded area is called the intersection of A and B. That is the set of all elements which are in both A and B. This is A intersection B. This uh, rectangle represents the universal set U. Now what about A minus B? A minus B is this is A, this is B, and A minus B is uh, this one. that is the set of all elements which are in A but not in B. A minus B. Sometimes written as this. And what is uh, symmetry difference? This is A, this is B. A, B. Uh, the symmetry difference is this shaded area. That is the set of all elements which are in A or in B but not both. It is A minus B union, B minus A. So we'll do. And uh, you can also represent the, suppose this is your set A. So set of all, the set of all elements which are not in A, the set of all elements of U which are not in A, is called the complement of. It's called the complement. Some people call this uh, uh, Venn diagram. Some people call it Venn Euler diagram.
Venn diagrams are very useful <laughs> when you start with set theory in order to uh, understand the various uh, <coughs> operations and relations between the sets. It's very convenient. But uh, for uh, postgraduate mathematics students, I will not advise uh, depending on uh, <coughs> Venn diagrams. Uh, you try to prove things <laughs> using the logic rather than drawing uh, <coughs> Venn diagram. So, of course, in order to understand the situation, you can draw a Venn diagram, but <laughs> in order to convince yourself fully, you'll have to draw, uh, you'll have to give rigorous proofs also. But for other people, I think uh, there is no harm in depending. Venn diagrams, but the problem is that Venn diagrams are useful only in some situations. Suppose you are having a lot of sets, <laughs> A, B, C, D, E, F, etc. <laughs> the situation will, will be very complicated and it will be very difficult to represent all these things in a Venn diagram. <coughs> and mathematicians should be able to. <laughs> uh, <coughs> argue logically and prove their claims without uh, depending on <coughs> Venn diagrams much. Now this uh, A delta B is also equal to A union B minus A intersection. This is a delta B. Clear, it's clear that this is A union B minus that is uh, the elements of A union B which are not in A intersection. Two. You can also prove these things rigorously. I recommend this as a homework. And this is symmetric. That is, A delta B is the same as B delta A. Or in other words, this operation is commutative like the operations of union and intersection. What is uh, A union A? Clearly there is A. And what is A intersection A? That is also equal to A. And what is A delta A? Is A minus A union A minus A? And what is A minus A? empty set, union, empty set, union of two empty sets again, empty set. So, A delta A is always A. Now, suppose I am having three sets, A, B and C. How to take the union of these sets? At a time, I can take only the union of two sets. So, I can take the union of A and B, and then I can take the union of this with C. A and B are two sets, I can take the union, and there is A union B. Now, A union B is a set, C is another set, I can take the union of A union B and C. This is one way. Another method is uh, I can take the union of B and C first and then take the union of A with that. But these two sets are one the same because an object is in the left hand side if and only if it is either element of A or element of B or element of C. And in that case it is also an element of the right hand side and conversely. So A union B union C is the same as 
A union B union C. And this property is called the associativity. What is the use of associativity? Suppose you are having four elements or five elements, the situation will become very complicated. Suppose you are having A, B, C and D. There are several ways of forming the unions. You can do, take union of A and B, take the union of A union B with C, then take the union of A union B union, A union B union C with the D. That is one method. You can also start from the end and go backwards. You take the union of C and D first, then take the union of B with C union D and then take the union of A with There is another method. You can take the union of A and B first. You can take the union of C and D, then take the union of that. So, in, that, in this fashion, when the number of sets is very large, there are several ways of operating. And the associativity assures that whatever be the method of you are doing it, you will get the same answer. And the commutativity assures that the order, uh, the order in which the elements are written is immaterial. So, uh, this is uh, important in the case of any uh, binary operation. And uh, the similar results you can ha have for intersection. That is A uh, intersection B intersection C is the same as A intersection B intersection C. Intersection is also associative. I am uh, leaving the proofs to you. And uh, in the same way, Symmetry difference is also associative. There is A delta B delta C is equal to A delta B delta C. You can, you first draw the Venn diagram for this and get convinced that the left hand side and the right hand side are equal but not <laughs> don't get satisfied with that try to write a mathematical proof for that how to write the mathematical proof you take an element here prove that it is here take an element there prove that it is here <coughs> uh, you should uh, uh, do this exercise at least once in your life time. Now, I will, let me give one interesting application of the properties of this uh, symmetry difference. Uh, you take as any, any set A, you take the power set of A. In this set, symmetry difference is a binary operation. If you take any two subsets of A, the symmetry difference is again a subset of A. So, this is a well defined binary operation on the set of, on the power set of A. And this operation is associative. This, oper uh, this operation is also having the property that A delta phi is equal to phi delta A because delta is commutative is the same as A. In algebra, this property is uh, uh, stated as uh, empty set is the identity element of this operation. That is, if you operate any element with, with the empty set, a, as a delta phi or phi delta a, you will get the same answer a. So, there is a binary operation and that operation is associative. There is this identity element. And you also have the property A delta A is the same as D. 
This means that every element is having an inverse. What is meant by an inverse of an element in algebra? B is said to be an inverse of an element A if A operated with B is the same as B operated with A is the same as the identity element. Here the identity element is phi. So this means that A delta A is equal to phi for every A means that for every set A, A is the inverse of A. That means every element is having an inverse. A set with a binary operation which is associative, which is having an identity element and which is uh, having the property that every element has an inverse, such a system is called a group. So this means that the power set of A with the, the operation symmetry difference is a group. Moreover, we know that this operation is commutative. So this is a commutative group or abelian 